So, in the beginning, he said that the allegations were false. Then the current Attorney General said that neither the Prime Minister or his office pressured the former Attorney General. We know that none of this is true. When will the Prime Minister stop misleading Canadians? The Honourable House Leader. It's important for the Canadians to know that Canadians have to have the opportunity to listen for themselves, and that's exactly why he waived solicitor client privilege and cabinet confidence. We know that the members who sit on the Justice Committee asked to hear witnesses, and they heard their testimony, and all the facts are now public, and Canadians can hear for themselves. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The minister's first response to these allegations were simply that they were false, that he never put pressure on the former attorney general. In fact, the current attorney general had the replacement to replace the former attorney general who refused to go along with the political interference, said, and I quote, neither the prime minister nor his office put my predecessor or me under pressure. We now know that that wasn't true. So why does the prime minister find it so hard to say things that just aren't true? The Honourable Government House Leader. Canadians be able to hear from themselves, and that's exactly why Justice Committee meetings took place in public. Justice Committee members sat down together, they set parameters for a, d a discussion. These allegations, for the entire period of these allegations, the Prime Minister uh, waived sister prime privilege as well as cabinet confidence so that Canadians could hear for themselves, Mr. Speaker. Something we heard at committee was that the rule of law in Canada is intact, that the rule of law was followed at all times. These were decisions for the Attorney General to take. And it's important that Canadians note that we will continue to raise the bar so that we can we'll continue to support and improve our institutions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition Order. So their defence, Mr. Speaker, is that everything's okay because they got caught. <laughs> That's not going to cut it for Canadians. Nobody's buying the Prime Minister's excuse. The phone call between the former Attorney General and Michael Warnick made it crystal clear. Michael Warnick says multiple times that the Prime Minister was firm. He says he was, quote, determined, quite firm, that he's in a firm mood about this, that he's in a pretty firm frame of mind about this, and finally, and I think he's going to find a way to get it done yep. one way or another. Now, the former Attorney General has implored her colleagues to let truth be the authority rather than authority be the truth. So when will Liberals finally Finally start telling the truth. The Honourable Government House Leader. Justice Committee set parameters. There are members from all recognized parties that sit on the Justice Committee. For the period in which those allegations have been alleged, the Prime Minister waives solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence because Canadians should be able to hear for themselves. And that's exactly why those meetings took place in public. Within those meetings and when uh, witnesses appeared, gave their testimony, additional documents were requested. Those documents have now been provided to Justice Committee members. We know that they can make decisions for themselves. We have confidence in our institutions, and Canadians can have confidence as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Charbot au saint charles Ms. The Prime Minister has said many things he knows to be untrue. We know that Michael Wernick placed the call on behalf of the Prime Minister. We know that Mr. Wernick mentions the PM 24 times during the call. The audio recording is the latest proof that sheds light on this corruption scandal. Why is the, the Prime Minister obst being obstructionist and preventing the Justice Committee from doing its work? The Honourable Government House Leader. As I've said, Canadians have to have the opportunity to hear for themselves, and that is why the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege and cabinet confidence, and why uh, witnesses were able to appear and share their testimony. We know that these meetings took place in public, and now all these facts are public for Canadians to hear, and they can understand for themselves. And we know the system is working. We trust our institutions, and Canadians can also trust them. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Charbou, au saint charles Mr. Speaker, the Canadians aren't trusting this Prime Minister or his government. The Justice Committee and the witnesses that were asked for, Telfer, Mr. Bouchard, Amy Orchard, Ben Chin, Justin To, Jessica Price, the Liberals sitting on this committee refused to hear from them. These witnesses had really real things to say. So how come the Prime Minister is hiding the truth from Canadians? Let the Justice Committee do its work. 
The Honorable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, Canadians can hear this for themselves, and that is why these meetings were held in public. And that's exactly why witnesses were able to share their testimony, even though the Conservatives don't want to hear the facts. But all of these facts are now public, so that Canadians can decide for themselves. We know that we can always do better, and that is exactly why the Prime Minister did take responsibility, and that is why he has established additional measures so that we can continue to work for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bertie Masquidanger. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal Caucus hasn't been beating around the bush. Instead of providing Canadians with the truth, they're spending all their time criticizing and even attacking the former Attorney General for having recorded a, dis a conversation during which she was asked 17 times in 17 minutes to change her decision. This is how Liberals treat honest women and their party. How can the Prime Minister maintain that he encourages women to get involved in politics when he doesn't even stand up for them when it counts? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, as I said, the members who sit on the Just Justice Committee decided amongst themselves to have a conversation, to hear from witnesses, and they did come to the committee and they provided their testimony. All the facts are now public. It's important for us to have trust in our institutions, but even though the NDP are siding with the Conservatives, they want to play politics instead of letting us do our very important work. We're going to continue to have trust in our institutions, and we know that Canadians will too. The Honourable Member for Bertie Masquinanger. Cracking a joke to make your don donors laugh, that's normal, but mocking a protester seeking to improve the catastrophic situation in the Grassy Narrows First Nations, this is completely unacceptable and shameful, especially since the Prime Minister still hasn't shown up for them and solved their mercury poisoning crisis in their community. This is not a game. It's not funny, Mr. Speaker. When will the Prime Minister go to Grassy Narrows to understand the full extent of his of this situation? Thank you. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Grassy Narrows. Asked in our commitment to build a health facility in that community. Officials are in regular contact with the community to advance plans for the design and the construction of that facility. And I look forward to meeting with Chief Turtle to determine how we continue moving on this critical path forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Timmins, James Bay. Mr. Speaker, you have to look very long and hard to find a joke so dissonant and disconnected as the Prime Minister's decision to ridicule the people of Grassy Narrows. And I was speaking with Chief Rudy Turtle, and he said that nobody from the Prime Minister's office have even bothered to call to apologize. When a leader does something so snide and so smug to such a marginalized community, the decent thing to do is to pick up the phone and say sorry. That's leader to leader, nation to nation. So will the Prime Minister make this right and commit in this House that he will personally call Chief Turtle and apologize? Yeah. The Minister of Indigenous Services. Have suffered for generations, and we recognize the numerous health issues that the community faces to this day. We remain committed to building that facility that meets the needs of the community members. And as I have stated, we are in contact with the community, and I am eager to meet with Chief Turtle to discuss this matter personally so we can move on this together. Honorable Member for Timmins James Bay, order. Why is the Prime Minister hiding on this? Why won't he do the decent thing? It's a question of his judgment. Just like his handling of the SNC bribery case, when you listen to the Michael Warnick tape, it's impossible to think anything other than the fact that the Prime Minister was the driving force in trying to make the Attorney General fold. And yet he said he was never briefed on the conversation. They took early vacation. And the first thing he did when he came back in January was to get rid of her, just like he's trying to get rid of her today. I mean, for damage control, this guy is a mess. Who's running the operation over there? Here, here. Yeah. Honourable Government House Leader. Speaker, I will say that I was elected by my constituents to ensure that I fight for them. I know that uh, the member opposite chooses to talk about caucus politics, but we respect that caucus will have tough conversations. We on this side know that we can have tough conversations, that it's good to have meaningful debate. It's important that we continue to advance work for 
Canadians, that's exactly who sent us here. When it comes to our institutions, Mr. Speaker, Canadians can have confidence in their institutions. And when it comes to that call that the a member is referring to, it's important to note that the tools that were available were for the Attorney General to make a decision. Order. I'm having a hard time hearing the answer. I would ask the member for Dufferin Caledon and others not to interrupt when someone else has the floor. They wouldn't want to be interrupted when they have the floor, I'm sure. The order. My honorable friend from Bruce Gray, Owen Son, I'd ask also to restrain himself. Uh, the honorable member for Milton. A minute ago, the House leader indicated that the opposition members were playing politics with this matter. Well, that's interesting because that's exactly the theme of my question today. On September 17th, this is what was said about testimony in Jody Wilson Raybould. Jody Wilson Raybould's testimony. The PM jumped in. member knows, of course, that uh, members cannot use members' personal names in the House, so I'd ask her to uh, carry on without doing so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. But it's nice to see them defending her once in a while. <laughs> Canadians that the Justice Committee looked at this matter. The Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is currently investigating this matter. There is definitely an ongoing court case when it comes to this matter. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the work that we are here to do, we will defend the best interest of Canada and the best interest of Canadians. Canadians sent us here to do important work on their behalf. We have confidence in our institutions. It was confirmed at the Justice Committee that the rule of law was followed, and we know that we can always improve, and that's why the Prime Minister took responsibility. We'll continue to work for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Milton. Speaker, the House Leader is completely incorrect. The Justice Committee did not make a finding that the rule of law was followed. Right. She should withdraw that remark. That's Ms. Secondly, if you want to talk about playing politics, the former Attorney General testified on September 17th. The Prime Minister jumped in, stressing that there is an election in Quebec oh. and that I'm an MP in Quebec, the member for Papineau. And on January 7th, we learned this is how the Prime Minister concluded. After an election, everything is fresh again. This is all about politics, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah. How can the House Leader answer all these questions? Honourable Government House Leader. Milton has just confirmed that rather than actually listen to the testimony that was provided by witnesses, they have already drawn their conclusions. The fact remains that the Conservatives actually had drawn their conclusions well before the Justice Committee even started to meet. Canadians know because they were able to publicly hear the testimony that the former Attorney General confirmed at committee within her testimony, which took place over four hours, that the rule of law in Canada was intact, that Canadians had a confidence in in their institutions that the rule of law was followed. Mr. Speaker, it's important that we listen to the testimony. Thank you. Order. Hello. Order. Members for their assistance. <laughs> the Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, La Presse would like to shed light on the sad Liberal SNC Lavalin scandal. They are expecting documents from the Privy Council. Normally, we should be giving these documents 30 days after they're requested. But now we've learned that it'll take 240 days to receive them. And what a coincidence, it, they'll come two weeks after the elections. Canadians will have to make a choice without knowing the whole story. How come they are hiding important information about the SNC-Lavalin scandal? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the members who sit on the Justice Committee ma made a decision amongst themselves 
to have a discussion in public on this affair, and we know that witnesses shared their testimony. We know that the members who sit on this committee asked to have more information. That's exactly why the witnesses were able to share this information. We know that the system is working because the witnesses were able to share this information. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, she's avoiding the question. Since she wants to talk about the committee, let's talk about the committee. This morning, the Justice Committee, well, the members asked to hear from 10 witnesses Amongst the, um, among which the former, general, former Attorney General. The Liberals, under their leader, are trying to prevent witnesses from speaking. Mr. Speaker, will the government finally allow Canadians to have access to all information? And why is the Prime Minister continuing to hide the truth from Canadians? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, I cannot speak for the Conservatives, but I can say that the Liberal members who sit on the Justice Committee, like all committees, including the Justice Committee, make their decisions themselves. And I know that the Conservatives like take instruction, to take instruction from their leader. We know that was the case for 10 years under Stephen Harper. And now it's the case with the new leader They've chosen a new leader, but their policy hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. But our members make their own decisions themselves. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Chilliwack Hope. Liberals on the Justice Committee tried to kill the SNC-Lavalin investigation, saying there's nothing left to hear, but of course that's not true. Yeah. Canadians are listening, and they heard the former clerk of the Privy Council pressuring the former Attorney General to interfere in an ongoing investigation. They heard him say he was acting on behalf of the Prime Minister. Nobody believes the Prime Minister's claims of innocence here. The investigation must be allowed to continue. Why is the Prime Minister so afraid of the truth coming out? Why doesn't he just and the cover-up. The Honourable Government House Leader. It's important that Canadians be able to hear the truth, and that's exactly why witnesses appeared at the Justice Committee, and that's exactly why all testimony was made in public. All of the facts are on the table. To ensure that Canadians could hear for themselves, the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege, as well as Cabinet confidence. Mr. Speaker, this is an unprecedented measure. It's definitely not something we saw under the Conservatives because, well, God forbid um, people be able to speak. But on this side, we recognize that Canadians can make their own decisions, and that's why we have confidence in our institutions. In that same recording, the, the Clerk of the Privy Council confirmed that it was a decision for the Attorney General to take. Thank you. Honourable Member for Chilliwack, Hope, Order. Mr. Speaker, isn't it convenient that the only six Canadians who think that this thing is over sit on the Justice Committee and are Liberal members of Parliament? The rest of Canadians know that there's much more to hear here. Yes, the disgraced Speaker. Principal Secretary to the former Prime Minister has submitted new evidence. The former Attorney General submitted new evidence. Can the Canadians must be able to get to the truth. The committee must resume the investigation. So why doesn't the Prime Minister get out of the way, stop the cover up and allow the full truth yeah. to be heard. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, there is an ongoing court case on this matter. The Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is currently investigating this matter. Justice Committee members did study this matter, and that member has just confirmed that the system is working because witnesses were able to provide additional information to committee just as committee members had asked for. Mr. Speaker, that member has just confirmed that the system is working, that Canadians can have confidence in their institutions, and we should. We should have confidence in our institutions because they are functioning for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Order. The Honourable Member for Churchill, Huatnook, Askey. Mr. Speaker, Canadian scientists are sounding the alarm. Canada is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world, and it's effectively irreversible. The report is scathing, but it's no surprise. This government is defending Harper's climate targets. They're still subsidizing the oil industry uh, to the tune of billions of dollars, and they spent $4.5 billion of our money. 
money to buy a pipeline. Northerners want action. Young people are demanding it. The time for Timmet is over. We need big action. We need a Green New Deal. So the question is, when will this government take bold action to take on catastrophic climate change? Well, Minister of Environment. I absolutely agree we need bold action, and that's exactly what we do. We have a climate plan with over 50 measures. Let's talk about what those measures are. First of all, yesterday, it's, as of yesterday, it's no longer free to pollute anywhere in the world. We've also, we're also phasing out coal, investing in renewables, and ensuring a just transition for workers. We're ensuring energy efficiency measures so we can support businesses, schools, hospitals, municipalities, save money, and so they can also take action on climate change. We're investing in clean solutions. We're taking action, but what? The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. In 2015, the Liberals promised to end subsidies for oil companies. Then it was just the inefficient subsidies. Already, this was suspicious. Then this morning, surprise, we learned through the Environment Com Commissioner that they didn't even provide a definition for the term inefficient. They, they are continuing to give subsidies for oil, and since they're going to miss all of their climate change targets, can the Prime Minister agree that the best definition of the term inefficient can be resumed in two words, liberal government? The Honourable Minister for the Environment, I'm very happy to stand up today to say that, that we can no longer pollute freely in the world anywhere. We have ambitious targets to fight climate change. Of course, we have to end inefficient subsidies on fossil fuels. We are getting rid of coal. We're investing in renewable energy. We're investing in public transit and electricity and eco-efficient energy. People have a decision to make for the next elections between a uh, Liberal company, uh, government that has a plan for the environment and the Conservatives that don't. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Athabasca. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals keep repeating that the whole PM interference scandal is untrue and that the file is closed. And the leader keeps on saying this morning, that all this information is public now. And as if, if this is true, will her or the Prime Minister uh, agree to make all the documents from his former uh, clerk of the Privy Council, Mr. Wernick, available to all Canadians right now? Yes or no? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, the members who sit on the Justice Committee asked to hear from witnesses. The witnesses came. They provided their testimony. And the members who sit on the Justice Committee asked to have additional documentation. And now we've seen that these documents were presented to the committee so that the members who sit on the committee can see them. And these documents are public for all Canadians to see. But I think that's rich now that the con the Conservatives are trusting the media. This wasn't the case for 10 years under Stephen Harper. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Athabasca. Ms. I don't think the leader is listening to my question. The question is simple. La Presse asked to have access to the documentation from the former Privy Council clerk, Mr. Wernick. And the answer they received, well, unlike what is usually the case, 30 days, that these documents would only be available to, in 240 days. This means after the upcoming elections. If the Prime Minister has nothing to hide, how come he can't make all this information available to Canadians? The Honourable Government House Leader, the members who sit on the Justice Committee made a decision. So. They were able to have a discussion in public so that Canadians could hear all the testimony. The Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege and cabinet confidence, and I think it's very important for us to have trust in our institutions. We know now that these documents were requested, and now they're going to receive these documents. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
I don't think the government house leader is hearing the question, so I will try again. We have learned that the Prime Minister's office is refusing to provide basic information to the Quebec paper La Presse on the SNC-Lavalin scandal until, get this, after the next election. Uh, now, by law, access to information ways. requests are supposed to be responded to within 30 days, but this Prime Minister, in his desperation to cover up, seems to think he's above the law. Why is the Prime Minister obstructing media's access to information in order to cover up his deceitful behavior. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I would like to reassure the member that uh, I am able to hear and I hear their question because they choose to repeat the same question for the entirety of the question period. This is not the first day that they've done this, Mr. Speaker. They have been done this for weeks on end and when I answer they like to shout and scream because they don't want to hear the answer. What is clear is that the Prime Minister has waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence so that Canadians can actually listen for themselves. All of these discussions have taken place in public so that Canadians can actually hear for themselves. It's important that they be able to and that member has also confirmed that those documents will be received by letter. The Honourable Opposition House Leader. Interesting answer, Mr. Speaker. Gerald Butts, who is no longer in the Prime Minister's office, seems to have unfettered and instant access yeah, to government yeah, texts, yeah. emails, and documents yeah, as he continues his campaign to try to discredit the former Attorney General. But when the media requests important information, it's nothing but refusals, obstructions, and delays. So my question is for the President of the Treasury Board. It is clear that the Prime Minister is abusing his power in order to stop important information from being revealed. The Prime Minister is moving heaven and earth to cover up his obstruction and his deceitfulness. Why? Here, here. President of the Honourable Governor House Leader. It is shameful that I can't hear the answer. Members need to behave in a way that Canadians can appreciate. They don't appreciate this kind of behavior of heckling, so let's not have any of it. The Honourable, Gov the Honourable Government House Leader has the floor. Uh, I'll try that again. So there are members from all recognized parties in this House that sit on the Justice Committee. The Justice Committee met. They set parameters when it comes to these allegations. And the Conservatives actually were saying that the Justice Committee will never meet. It met for over five weeks on this issue, which is longer than most pieces of legislation are even studied. And then they called witnesses. And to ensure that witnesses would be able to share with Canadians, the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. All matters are public for Canadians. Canadians to see. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Jonquière, order. The report of the Parliamentary Budget Officer reveals that the Liberals are deliberately making it more expensive for people to buy medicines. The free trade deal with the U.S. will apparently cause prices to go up. Collectively, we'll be paying at least $169 million more by 2029. Millions of people are already struggling to pay for their prescription drugs, and this deal will make things worse. The government needs to bring prices down for everyone. Why do the Liberals keep signing trade deals that inflate drug costs? Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs. Canadians are proud of our public health care system. As Canadians, that's part of our identity. We also know that accessibility to drugs is an important issue for many Canadians. That is why Budget 2019 provides for concrete steps to create a national pharmacare system. Our government will always defend our public health care. Sniffy Churchill River. Mr. Speaker, health care in northern Saskatchewan is only getting harder. In Meadow Lake, six doctors and one nurse practitioner will be leaving the community by the end of the summer. And with the closure of STC, more seniors won't have access to health care. Prescriptions are getting more expensive because of this government. Yeah. And seniors and elders are already forced to choose between their groceries and their medicine. When will the Liberals make Pharmacare universal so that everyone across northern Saskatchewan gets the help they need? Yeah. 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 
Minister of Indigenous Services. Speaker, our government is working to close the unacceptable gap that exists between access and quality health care between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. And to close that gap, I am proud to report that 52 new community-led mental wellness teams are now serving 344 communities. Over 214,000 requests for First Nations children have been approved under Jordan's principle. And we are working with Indigenous partners in northern Saskatchewan and across the country to reach arrangements that support Indigenous control of health care delivery for Indigenous peoples. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bay of Quinte. Mr. Speaker, this week we celebrate the 70th anniversary of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Since its foundation on April 4, 1949, NATO has been a cornerstone of Canadian defence and security policy. As a founding member, we have contributed to every NATO operation over the past seven decades and remain a leader with the Alliance. On this anniversary, can the Minister of National Defence please update the House on our government's commitment to international peace and security and leadership in NATO? Thank you. Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the member from Bay of Quinte for his question and his incredible support of our Canadian Armed Forces. Mr. Speaker, Canada is a founding member of NATO. We have contributed to every NATO operation over the past seven decades and remain a leader within the alliance. We are leading a multinational battle group in Latvia. We are commanding the NATO training mission in Iraq. These contributions are a clear demonstration to the Alliance on this milestone anniversary. And Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank the women and men of the Canadian Armed Forces who serve us every single day. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. It is the job of all members of Parliament to act in the best interest of Canada, and that's exactly what the former Attorney General was doing, protecting our rule of law from political interference. And yet, she and the former President of the Treasury Board have been smeared, intimidated and silenced for doing what Canadians expect of all of us. Should acting on principle come with such a devastating cost? Why is the Prime Minister punishing these women for telling the truth about his corruption? The Honourable Government House Leader. Canadians should be able to hear and decide for themselves, and that's exactly why the Prime Minister waives solicitor-client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. Mr. Speaker, this is something that has not been done. It is unprecedented because it is important that Canadians be able to hear. Members that sit on the Justice Committee had meetings on this matter for over five weeks, and Canadians were able to hear for themselves. Members that sit on the committee actually asked for additional information. They have received that additional information. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? That information, too, is public. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Lethbridge. When the former Attorney General stood up and spoke her truth, when she functioned with integrity, she got fired. Now, the Prime Minister doesn't like it when strong and intelligent, capable women stand up to him. As Michael Wernick said, we know how he can get when he's in a mood. Now, the Prime Minister has done everything that he possibly can to try to berate and discredit the former Attorney General. But every time he attacks her, she comes forward with more and more evidence to prove her point. Why is the Prime Minister punishing strong women who stand up to him? Yes. Questions been addressed several times in this House. Canadians want to know why is it that they voted against proactive pay equity legislation? They want to know why they voted against child care, why they voted against funding to support single moms, why they voted against funding to support a housing strategy that puts a roof over women's heads so that they don't have to stay in abusive relationships, why they voted against money for sexual assault centers. Our speak our record speaks for itself, Mr. Speaker. member for Calgary Nose Hill. Rather than letting authority be the truth, let truth be the authority. If I had succumbed to, in, uh, succumb, succumb to inter, interpreting the beliefs of others to be the truth, I never would have been able to push forward in the mm. face of racism and misogyny. Mm. Misogyny imposes social costs on women who don't conform and speak truth to power. 
Is that why the Liberal Party is so hell-bent on smearing the former Attorney General and turfing her from their party? Yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Again, that's exactly why the Prime Minister waives such a kind of privilege, as well as cabinet confidence. And let me share this quote from the former Attorney General when she appeared at committee. I really want to say this, and I'll be brief. I do not want members of this committee or Canadians to think that the integrity of our institutions has somehow evaporated. The integrity of our justice system, the integrity of the Director of Public Prosecutions and Prosecutors is intact. So I don't want to create fear that this is not the case. Mr. Speaker, we have confidence in our institutions, and Canadians can as well. Thank you. For Calgary Nose Hill. Mr. Speaker, there are 338 women from across the country that are here as part of a program to encourage more women to run for office. And members of that party went to a cocktail reception with them, took pictures with them, tweeted about them, yep. then walked across the street and went into a caucus meeting after smearing the former Attorney General because she spoke truth to power. Unbelievable. Why is the Liberal Party so hell-bent? on punishing the former Attorney General for speaking her truth. The Honourable Minister for the Status of Women. We reject entirely the premise of that question. What I'd like to know, and what those 338 young women want to know, is why the Conservatives voted against the funding to bring them here to Ottawa. $4.5 billion in Detroit, creating 6,500 jobs. I asked the minister to set up a task force to ensure Canadian workers and Canadian companies could benefit from this next generation investment. The minister has yet to respond. Instead, he slapped workers in the face by leaving out the Canadian-made electric Chrysler Pacifica from the vehicle incentive program in their own budget. The minister was forced to reverse this government's blunder, but we still need a new product to protect the Windsor workers and 1,500 jobs are on the line. What is the point of his $2 billion fund if he never uses it? Is he finally going to get some investment? Honourable Minister of Innovation. To correct the record, the $2 billion fund that the member opposite is referring to is the Strategic Innovation Fund, and absolutely the automotive sector has benefited from that fund. We've seen 40 projects move forward, which has resulted in $6 billion worth of new investments since we formed government in 2015 in the automotive sector. We've seen thousands of jobs created, but at the same time, we recognize that the FCA third shift closure is very difficult for the workers and their families in the community of Windsor. We'll continue to work with the union and the leadership to find a solution and get new mandates here in Canada. Honourable yeah. Member for North Island, Powell River. Mr. Speaker, Veterans Affairs Canada has yet again failed to meet its service standards in two-thirds of its programs. Mm. Some results were as low as 23 percent. That is not acceptable. Shameful. Most programs have even worse results than the former year. So the problem continues. The Liberals have had plenty of time to fix things for veterans and have failed to do so. It's an insult to every Canadian who has served this country. What will this government do to serve the people who served us so well? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, our government is determined to serve veterans of Canada by providing them with the care and support they need. We've invested over $10 billion additional dollars in care for veterans and their families, including by a, delivering a lifelong pension, access to education, and critical supports that the Conservatives had cut for 10 years. They cut in PTSD care. They cut 
doctor's positions. We will be there for our veterans, Mr. Speaker. For Abbotsford. Well, Mr. Speaker, let's be very clear. The SNC Lavalin scandal is about the Prime Minister's own corruption. The scandal is on him. Remember when the story first broke? He said it was false. Nothing to see here. Yep. And then when the evidence mounted, he changed his story again and again and again. So why is the Prime Minister going to such great lengths to hide his unethical behaviour from Canadians? Why won't he just end the cover-up and tell Canadians the truth? Yeah. Honourable Government House Leader. I think Canadians remember really well when the Conservatives had said that the Justice Committee will never meet. The Conservatives had said that witnesses would never appear. The Conservatives said that the former Attorney General would not be able to speak and share her story because the Prime Minister would not waive solicitor client privilege and not waive cabinet confidence because Stephen Harper never would have. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? The Justice Committee met, witnesses appeared to ensure Canadians could hear the truth, the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence all took place in public for Canadians to hear. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Order. The Honourable Member for St. Albert Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal shut down the Justice Committee. They shut down the Ethics Committee. They have refused a public inquiry. They have blocked key documents from the media. And through it all, the Prime Minister has repeatedly changed his story. So, when will the Prime Minister end the charade, come clean, tell the truth, and end the cover-up? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the same question deserves the same answer. So, the Justice Committee has met. They asked for witnesses to appear to ensure that Canadians could hear for themselves the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as Cabinet confidence. All information uh, is on in public. We also know that it was confirmed at committee that the rule of law in Canada is intact and that the rule of law was followed. Canadians can have, have um, confidence in their institutions, but we know that we can always improve our institutions and the way we work here, and that's why the Prime Minister has taken responsibility and put measures into place to, to ensure we strengthen our institutions. I know the member for Prince Albert is looking for it, for it to improve weather, but I'd rather hear about it when he has the floor. The Honourable Member for Battleford's Lloyd Minster. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It sounds like a bunch of fake transparency to me. The SNC-Lavalin scandal has once again exposed the Prime Minister's ethical bankruptcy. New evidence provided to the Justice Committee reconfirms this. The only reason the Liberals are upset about the recording submitted by the former Attorney General is because Canadians heard it. That recording proves that the Prime Minister hasn't been honest about this corruption scandal, and Canadians are owed better. When will the Prime Minister tell the truth and end the cover-up? Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I actually just now understand that member and the Conservatives don't understand that why this information is public and why witnesses were able to appear and share information is because the Prime Minister waived solicitor-client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. That member seems to not understand why this information is now for the public and Canadians that are the public to see for themselves. It's because the Prime Minister recognizes that Canadians should be able to decide for themselves and that's exactly why he waived cabinet confidence and client, solicitor client privilege. Honourable Member for Kildonan St. Paul. Order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government was pleased to support the first ever Manitoba First Nations Youth Summit, which took place last October. Youth from 51 First Nations across Manitoba took part in this unprecedented summit, leaning importance of and impact of in infrastructure projects and community planning, and how to draft infrastructure project proposals. In February, Indigenous Services received project proposals written by youth from eight participating communities. These projects include youth centres, outdoor ice rinks, rehab facilities and housing. The backbone of a healthy community. Can the Minister of... The Honourable Minister of Indigenous Services. 
like to thank the member from Kildonan St. Paul for her question and for her strong advocacy on behalf of Manitoba First Nations. Here, here. Last week, the Parliamentary Secretary for Indigenous Services, also a member from Manitoba, met with the youth upon their return to Winnipeg, and he also announced that our government is investing $4 million in projects in these communities. It is tremendous to be able to support Indigenous youth who are taking such a leading role in the development of solutions for issues facing their own communities. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate all of those who were involved. Yeah. Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Mr. Speaker, the government House Leader seems to forget it was a member of her caucus that called the Justice Committee's work a witch hunt at the outset. Now with the release of the recorded phone call between the former Attorney General and Michael Wernick, we've received confirmation of the Prime Minister's coordinated, sustained, inappropriate campaign to interfere with the independence of the judicial system. Wow. Section 139 of the Criminal Code says everyone who willfully attempts in any manner to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice in a judicial proceeding is guilty of an offence. Has the Prime Minister been contacted by the RCMP? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the Justice Committee looked at this matter. They set their parameters, and for the period in which the allegations were made, the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. The committee did their work. There is currently an investigation with the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner. There are officers of Parliament that do important work, and those institutions are functioning. When it comes to the rule of law in Canada, there is also an ongoing court case. And at committee, it was confirmed that the rule of law in Canada is confirmed, and the rule of law was followed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Mr. Speaker, invasive species threaten the health of our ecosystems and our local economies. And in my riding of South Okanagan, West Kootenay, we are very concerned about the threat of zebra mussels. Today, the Environment Commissioner's report confirmed that the Liberal government has no plan and completely inadequate enforcement measures to keep invasive species out of our lakes and rivers. So when will the Liberal government put in place a clear, science-based plan to protect our water from invasive species with the resources to implement it. Thank you. Honourable Minister of Fisheries and Oceans. I'd like to uh, thank the Honourable Member for his important question. We certainly take the threat of aquatic species, uh, aquatic invasive species to Canadian waters very seriously and we accept the recommendations of the Commissioner of Environment and Sustainable Development. We are already in fact addressing a number of the key gaps that she notes in her report. In Budget 2017, we allocated approximately $44 million to address issues associated with aquatic invasive species. That money is now in the process of being rolled out. We are working actively with the provinces who also have jurisdiction in this area to ensure that we have a comprehensive plan to address the issue of aquatic invasive species. Uh, the Honourable Member for Dorval, Lachine LaSalle. After 10 years of neglect by the previous government, Shameful. federal science and research infrastructure was at an all-time low. Our researchers were muzzled, our labs were shuttered, and evidence-based decision-making was nowhere to be seen. Shame, it has been three years of Shame. hard work by our government to return science to its rightful place. Can the Minister of Science and Sport please tell this House how our government is repairing the 10 years of damage on our researchers and our research infrastructure. Thank you. All Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for her excellent question. Unlike the previous government, our government understands we must invest in our researchers and students. That's why since coming to government, we've invested over $10 billion in science and research to support our world-class researchers. That includes our recently announced $763 million for the Canada Foundation for Innovation, as well as stable long-term funding. Our government believes in and supports science, research and evidence-based decision-making. The Honourable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, we now have confirmation that the Prime Minister and Cabinet undermined the rule of law on November 5, 2015, by preventing Liberal MPs from complying with Section 49 of the Parliament of Canada Act. Liberal members were to have voted in a recorded division, just like in this House of Commons, on the secret ballot expulsion rule. By not voting, they acted illegally and broke the law. 
now that a legal act has come back to haunt them. Will the government hold off on any caucus expulsions until it complies with Section 49? And will the Attorney General ensure that the government comes into compliance with Section 49? The Honourable Government House Leader. to the Speaker as is required. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Manicouagan. Mr. Speaker, three times yesterday, my colleague from Repentigny asked the Liberals to commit to respecting the intentions of Quebecers and not to challenge the secularism bill in court. Three times, the Justice Minister refused to make that commitment. To him, Quebec's intentions uh, are discriminatory. I'll ask a fourth time. Will the Minister of Justice undertake to respect the intentions of Quebec and not challenge the secularism bill in court? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, our government has always defended and will continue to defend the fundamental rights of each and every Canadian. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms protects the rights of all Canadians. You can't pick and choose which right to protect and which one to disregard. Our position is clear, Mr. Speaker. It's not for government to dictate to people what they may or may not wear, regardless of their beliefs. The Honourable Member for Manicouagan. That wasn't the question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals don't understand Quebec at all. It's not about discriminating against anyone. We want the rules to be clear and for them to apply to everyone. One set of rules for all. That's not discriminatory. It's the opposite. Discrimination is the opposite of that. Will the minister undertake to respect the intentions of Quebecers, or will the federal government once again come in and trample Quebec's rights to make its own choices? The Minister of Justice. Canada is a secular country, and that's reflected in all our institutions. Government workers are allowed to display their beliefs, and no one should have to choose between employment and their right to wear a sign a religious symbol. It's all of our responsibilities to respect fundamental rights, and any erosion of those rights is unacceptable. Canada is open, inclusive, and rich with its diversity. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Family re reunification is extremely important to our immigration system. Uh, in 2014, we had a first-come, first-served application system that didn't work. In 2016, we moved to a lottery system that wasn't working very well. And last year, we moved to another system. But I've had constituents come into my office time and time again to complain that the portal was only open for a few minutes. So can the Minister of Immigration please update this House to ensure that family unification is fair and transparent for all Canadians? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Minister of Immigration. Important question. We have done uh, a lot to make sure that we've reduced the processing times for parents and grandparents to be reunited from seven years to under 20 months, uh, making sure that we've increased the spaces available for Canadians to sponsor their parents and grandparents from 5,000 spots under the Conservatives to more than 20,000 spots yeah, under yeah. our government. We'll continue to be ambitious in that regard and listen to Canadians to further improve the process. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Milton is arising on a point of order, arising on a question period. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are two different answers given with respect to whether or not the rule of law was discussed at the Justice Committee. In one response, the House Leader indicated that it was a decision. The Justice Committee concluded the rule of law. In the second uh, answer, she indicated that it, con it was confirmed at committee. I just want to make sure that Hansard reflects the truth, and it's important, Mr. Speaker, because of this. The House is receiving information from a committee indicating what a result of a committee was. It's incorrect information if it's about what the committee concluded, because there are no motions and there are no reports to back up yeah, what right. the House Leader has said. Therefore, I would suggest, Mr. Speaker, that we review Hanser to make sure that if she wishes to say confirmed, that's fine. But if she says concluded, it's erroneous and should not be in Hanser. Honourable uh, Government House Leader is rising to respond to this point of order. Mr. Speaker, to respond to the 
member from Milton, it's first of all important to note that everything that's said on the Hansard, members do have the opportunity to review to ensure that the Hansard is representative and reflective of exactly what was intended to say. It's also important that the member from Milton actually look at what the Justice Committee was studying and she will note that it was a study and that's exactly what it did. And my intention was always to confirm that witnesses that testified at the Justice Committee confirmed that the rule of law in Canada was intact and the rule of law was followed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, want to thank uh, the honourable member for uh, Chilliwack Hope is rising on the same point of order. On a different point of order, I'll just uh, indicate that uh, I will examine the question, the point of order raised by the honourable member from Milton and responded to by the honourable government house leader, whose comments I appreciate on both sides, uh, and if necessary, come back to the house on it. The honourable member for Chilliwack Hope. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Of course, over the last two days, we have not had routine proceedings in this house, but I understand if there is unanimous consent that we could revert back to the request for emergency debate to allow us to uh, consider the request from my colleague to have an emergency debate about the canola crisis facing our farmers in Western Canada. I'd seek unanimous consent of the House to revert back to request for emergency debates so that we could consider that right now, Mr. Speaker. Does the Honourable Member have unanimous consent of the House to return to no, there is no unanimous consent. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader is rising on a point of order. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, there have been discussions amongst the parties, and if you seek it, I think you'll find the unanimous consent for the following motion. That notwithstanding any standing order or usual practice of the House, uh, Bill S-1003, an act to amend the United Church of Canada Act, be deemed to have been read a second time and referred to a Committee of the Whole deemed considered in the Committee of the Whole, deemed reported without amendment, deemed concurred in at report stage, and deemed read a third time and passed. And does the Honourable Member have, the Honourable Founder Secretary have the unanimous consent of the House to move the motion? Agreed. The House has heard the terms of the motion. Is it the pleasure of the House to adopt the motion? Adopt. Carry. Third reading of this bill, troisième lecture de ce projet de loi. Orders of the day. Government orders, considering Ways and Means Motion Number 27 about budgetary policy. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Carleton. Yeah. 